everyone, Joe here from Action X. Welcome to What's on the Duber. Welcome back. If this is your seventh Perry Mason season two episode review, hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying safe out there in the great big world. Once again, I thought I was going to do another episode of What's on the Duber between last week's episode of Perry Mason and this one. I didn't get to do that. Um, I just got a little bit too preoccupied with personal life. But however, we're back into somewhat full steam. You know, I feel like this is like my little sluggish week is over. Um, rookies come back this week, next week after that. Walker, then shortly after, uh, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, just a lot of stuff to do on the on the roster. So like, it was nice to have a little bit of like a, a content break, a little bit. I've been working on some other stuff on the side. So um, it was just nice to take a break. Uh, but here we are. We're back to it. The penultimate episode of the season. And so far... It doesn't quite feel like the penultimate episode if that's... It's not really a compliment. It's not really an insult. It's kind of like that we... It's a weird notice. Like, it's... For me, it's kind of hard to picture how are they going to wrap up this entire thing next week. Like, how there's just... I, I feel like they need a little bit more time, in my opinion. I, I just don't know how they're going to resolve everything. If this is going to be another self-contained season, if they're not going to rely on a season three to like um, continue on the storyline, which again I don't, I, I feel like now that we're like now at the almost the finish line of this season, I don't inquire, I don't entirely think that. I, I feel like I'll save that for later. I, it, was, it was just my general. Maybe next week's episode will change my mind on whether or not I would think we would need a third season. Uh, but with that being said, let's go for the butcher recap and talk about this. Penultimate episode of Perry Mason. Uh, we begin with In the Ocean. Um, Perry and Strickland are coming out of it, which I'm like, are we doing a flashback episode? It would be kind of weird right now to do a flashback episode when like, there's so many storylines to be tangled. But no, it's kind of like one of those weird like uh, fast forward type of things. So uh, we cut back to present day where we're back in the... I forgot entirely where we start. We don't have a courtroom um, scene this episode. I know that for a fact. Oh, no, no. We pick back up with, to, to Strickland's conversation with the um, the ADA about just how, you know, his... Uh, kind of just, like, pushing into, like, hey, you gotta go against Perry here. You know, Perry's a very... It's, it's a snively one. Um, what he just did in court cannot slide. You know, th thankfully, the gun thing did manage to help them out a little bit. Um, Strickland's not entirely comfortable with this, to be honest with you. Like, now that he's kind of going against his friend... It's not something that he's really comfortable with for starters, so he's not, you know, entirely on the side of the ADA anymore. But of course, obviously, again, you don't bite the you don't bite the hand that feeds you, so he can't directly attack him. But he'll find another way around it per se. Um, I want to say, damn, it, there, there's a lot. I, 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 just to jog my memory, just to just to take tally of what we do. Uh, what we do, what we do, uh, we do not tackle this episode. Uh, Perry and Jeannie do not have a conversation this episode. That's very uh, strangely left um, ambiguous. Not ambiguous, but more like it's just it's not um, it's not tackled with this episode. Um, so definitely was kind of like another weird choice, uh, in my opinion. I mean, again, there's a lot of storylines going on, but it's like it's kind of it's kind of odd, in my opinion. But uh, per se, I I remember. Okay, now no, I remember. So we go back to the. Um, I want to say we just get to the, to the next the next day the next morning where Perry meets up with with the the judge and the prosecution and they talk like okay yeah so this entire thing can I saw you know Perry you definitely broke the law by withholding evidence to the jury and uh, the prosecution believes that they should amend this um, piece of evidence to include that Perry is now an accessory to, to murder because he uh, hit the murder weapon. Uh, and the judge does not disagree, uh, and he's going to give them till Friday to make a statement proclaiming that, yes, we have the murder weapon, yes, Mr. Mason is um, in lieu of it, and yes, there are plans to prosecute uh, Perry once this jur once this case is over. Uh, but, however, he's initially, um, the, 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 um, the judge is willing to try and put this on a mistrial, which... You might say it's like, oh, well, it's going to be the same thing like last season. Well, like, well, no, that's not what Perry wants. Because, like, again, Perry knows these two killed um, McCullough. We know that already. That's kind of irrefutable by this one. It wouldn't make no sense to do a mistrial because that would mean they'll still go to prison. The whole goal of this is to minimize their prison sentence. Um, so definitely P Perry has a timetable now to get as much evidence as he can to paint his story of, like, okay, McCullough was killed, yes, but he wasn't a good guy. So... The, his death is something that, you know, is more reasonable than just a random act of murder. So, that's still the plan, um, so to speak. Uh, meanwhile, speaking of McCullough, we cut, we cut over to another undesignated part of, of town, 
where McCullough is having dinner with fellow Japanese representatives of another company that we are left to be unclaimed at this moment. Um, they're trying to do business, but it does not seem like business is being reached. Um, the rich woman that Della has kind of like a connection with and also uh, that Perry kind of insulted a few episodes ago show up. She speaks Japanese to them, telling them they're like, yes, we have business for you. And yes, we will definitely uh, would like to pursue this business because it will meet both of our benefits, which they do agree, kind of tentatively setting the, the deal. Um, the elder McCullough is kind of a little bit offended that she had to step in to handle his deal. And she says, oh, well, yeah, well, I've been I, I've been around and, you know, you, you kind of weren't making much progress. It'd be kind of sucky if I didn't come up and say hi. Uh, but definitely she's just trying to, like, you know, appease the ship, trying to, like, you know, get back in his good graces considering the fact that um, they've had, had the best relationship in terms of business and, per, and, per, and personal in a, in a while. So her definitely just trying to be there to, like, kind of help her, him and as well as rec recommending him that, like, you know, right now, your son's name isn't entirely the best one right now, you know, considering the fact Perry and Della kind of sp sowed, unsowed some seeds. So definitely the people are not 100% on his team anymore, but if you want a chance to preserve his legacy, a statue or a memoriam, like a public memorial would be the best move for you right now to uh, get his good name back. But, he, but he's insulted by this, not not believing her whatsoever and deciding to, you know, I'm telling to get the hell out of here and like, you know, get, get, out, get out of the side. Um, Perry gets a call from Strickland to meet him up, meet him up at a bridge to talk a little bit. At first, it's kind of like, you know, just kind of friendly, neutral, like we're in the middle of our breaks type of ordeal. But Strickland does admit that, yes, he was the one who broke into his office, found the gun, and snitched it to the DA that this was um, in his possession. Obviously, a lot of emotions go for Perry's head right now, considering the fact not only did he blame his girlfriend for this and most likely broke up that entire relationship. Again, Perry, you do not, without it, you are a lawyer. You need physical piece of evidence you need a real logistic piece of it not just the semblance of like oh i think i think she did it uh so definitely and also just a betrayal of their friendship so, somewhat even though the, the last time they spoke they literally he literally yelled at him uh the two have a fight but perry perry wins yeah, I'm sorry, that delivery was horrible. Uh, Perry wins by pretty much kind of easily. Strickland doesn't really stand much for him. You know, for, for for statues, like, Strickland looks like a guy you wouldn't fuck with. Because the fact that Perry messed him up, I'm like, you know what? Perry's got some machismo in him after all. He, he does after all. Um, But knowing the fact that, you know, fighting isn't going to get them anywhere, you know, by Friday, Perry will basically be... um disbarred and will now be sentenced to um will be basically penalized by the folks under the law um yeah that's kind of creates a quite a pickle for perry but he has a few days to try and figure out a case to try and like you know get things o over with to kind of save the brothers once and for all uh, so they have to team up they have to work together Meanwhile, we come back to the jail. The mom of the brother show up, but only the elder brother is there because obviously the other brother is in the hole right now being punished for his, you know, transgressions. And, um, you know, it's uh, this is the first time the mom and, you know, the, the elder son got to talk, you know, really since the discovery that A, the gun, B, the payment, and C, just definitely confirm what's 100% that, yes, they killed the guy. She is disappointed in him considering the fact that they had such promising futures had they worked a little bit more harder just like a little bit more and we could have been in perfect in like a, in a great position and also she delivers him a letter that um they're, they're his youngest brother the youngest um got accepted into an art program and it was like fuck like he this was all he wanted this was his dream he got in and now he's not gonna come out he's he's Base, there's a good chance there's a really good chance they're not getting out of there so he's basically kind of you know tormenting himself that you know his brother is going to lose the opportunity just because they were trying to snack a few quick bucks uh so definitely he's not feeling uh well in the head and well in the head perry brings back strickland back to the law office with with, with della and um and drake already waiting for him drake's obviously pissed off the fact perry would even bring him here because in the fact the last time they all had an associate with, with each other strickland tricked him for his own benefits and Perry's like, yeah, you're right. We should kick Strickland's ass again right now. We really should. But we have a time crunch. By Friday, I will no longer be a lawyer. The brothers will be killed. You know, there is a time there. We have to work together. We have to put aside all of our differences, like every other um, TV show um, finales, and, you know, figure out how do we solve this problem? How do we get the best possible solution for the brothers? And you know, like, Perry just takes every opportunity to, like, jab Strickland a bit for, like, just this shittiness this season. Um... 
So yeah, so they kind of split. They kind of have no choice. Um, their only real choice is to follow up on the oil lead that um, Perry discovered last week from the uh, the other detective. Um, Drake's gonna go keep looking after the um, the woman who actually organized the hit against the brothers, and Della's gonna go just kind of get any other sources that she can to help them with their cases whatsoever. Uh, also, another thing, weird thing, like you know, they omitted from this. And again, it could be just me, like just they have to pace it like this just to make everything smooth and set up for the finale. We get nothing from Della and Anita this this episode. That, that could probably be done. Like you know, okay, they're gonna be, they're gonna be happy ever after. Like there should be no sort of like you know last minute of, you know hiccups between them between now and then. Hopefully not. Um, so yeah, Perry and and um, Strickland agree to go into the um, the waterfront where one of the um, remaining McCullen boats is located, and you know try to scope it out, see what's going on. They do notice a very large um, fruit fruit. Um, Package going in, which on the manifest just says, like, oh, we're basically giving this to, J to Japan, like, as a free consolation gift for, you know, all their services. Oh, how things were back in the day, where it was much more simpler to smuggle things out of, out of places. Um, so they pose as workers, they get into the boat. Um, at first, it just seems like a generic, you know, shipping boat that is shipping out fruits and veggies. Uh, but once they go a little bit more deeper into the water, or at least when they, when they set sail and everything, um, they find a second smaller boat. Uh, right next to them, and it has tubes of pipes that have oil in them, meaning that the whole, like, okay, so the Papa McCullen had a much more bigger oil ring plan than, you know, little McCullen's um, tiny oil oil plan as well, so. Now they're like, now they're like, oh, crap, this is the smoking gun we need. This is definitely what we need, so. Um, having no choice, they can't really escape right now or burn up burn up the thing, because otherwise they'll kill everyone. Um, they escape via... The, those um, little buoys, those little like life buoys, and just swim back to shore. And strictly, it should take an hour. They they basically take up the sun sun right, which I'm like, I could not imagine. Like it didn't look that far, but keep in mind, like it's the middle of the dark. I've only been to the Pacific like once in my life. I don't know. There's sharks out there, which I'm like, I would not swim in those ocean waters. But you know, hell to be. They go out there, they land safely. Um, so now they have this information against. Um, Against the McCollum, but like you know, obviously, like what is the reason why Japan, why everything's going on, and the um, this, even the secretary admits that, oh, what if they're trying to do like some sort of undercover deal or some you know backroom channel deal, like an under the table type of thing, and yeah, apparently they read a newspaper paper conveniently enough that like yeah, Japan has a lot of exports being blocked right now. Um, no exports and imports, like trading is off the rails. Trade trading is gone right now. So. This being like a, a kind of you know served as a gratuity gift, but it like it has a bunch of oil. Uh, it definitely means that McCullen is trying to make even more money off the side, off the table. Even if that means like you know betraying a foreign country's you know uh, politics, they don't care. So now they have this, and it's like okay, well if younger McCullen was trying to get this entire smaller venture off the rail, and then older McCullen has this entire plan as well, which was a much more bigger thing that it was international. Obviously, if they were already, like, you know, the feds were already looking into McCullen's oil oil de dealings. It definitely was, like, a big call. It's like, oh, okay, this is not the plan whatsoever. This is not what's going on, and now we're screwed. Um, I think after that, Della goes after the, I don't know, I'm not sure if she goes to the FBI headquarters, or, like, she goes somewhere. She goes to an investigative part department someday to get more information. And she's she's talking to a, to a um, investigator. Uh, he's being very finicky with the um, with the information. He he's not really being upfront on it, but you know he steps away a little bit, kind of like you know, okay, I'll give you what you know. Della waits a while, and then all of a sudden, there's just nothing. There's no um, move, movement on that front. Nothing's going on, and eventually uh, another associate comes back and says, "Oh, he had to step out for the day. Like, don't worry about it." Um, so Della finds this a little bit creepy, a little bit odd. She decides to leave, but she notices, like, this, like, presence following her. She notices something, so she calls Perry to let him know that, like, you know, that this happened, she wasn't able to get anything out of it, and that was, like, you know, toodles for that front. Uh, also, yeah, I forgot, there was another scene before, I forgot, where Della goes to meet the DA directly about, like, why are you switching sides all of a sudden? Why are you being more lenient? Like, what is going on? Like, why are you suddenly, you know, backing out on a lot of things you were trying to, you know, proclaim that this is going to happen in this case. Um, and he, he, he admits that, like, yeah, I'm being blackmailed myself. Like, um, someone caught me having an affair with, I believe, the quality of photos wasn't that great. I don't know if it was a man or a woman, but he's having an affair with someone, and definitely this isn't great for his reputation, so he's been, like, doing whatever this mysterious um, blackmailer wants 
whatever he wants on the table, and that's basically why. And he's warning Della, like, do not push these buttons any further, otherwise it'll be your turn um, to be, you know, kind of cr- cut in the crossfire, basically. Um, Perry pays a visit to um, the elder McCullen, who's teaching his grandson how to shoot. Uh, Perry immediately just dumps a bunch of fruit and veggies on the ground, indicating to him, like, I know all about your deal. I know everything that you're trying to do. And the other McCullough is like, you know, he he's both shocked. He, he's he's baffled. Not baffled, but, like, the word is, like, he's obviously disappointed that, like, Perry knows what he's really up to, but the reasoning is wrong. Like, you know, despite all of that, despite all the connections, still he holds to the presence of, like, I didn't kill her. Like, I didn't kill her. I didn't kill him. I didn't kill my own son. It was complete, it was someone else, and Perry's like, "Well, who else would want your son dead?" And I'm like, "Oh boy, Perry, you've been trying to ask this question all season. Like, well, who wouldn't want McCullen dead? Like, who wouldn't want?" Um, meanwhile, Dr- um, Drake is still consi- uh, pursuing his um, quest to find that uh, mysterious driver, the mysterious um, planner against um, that worked with the brothers. Uh, his wife shows up. This is the first time they saw each other since their uh, their arguments, like the last episode ago. And, you know, immediately she's like, hey, look, I still care about you, so here's some breakfast, here's some coffee, you know, see, I'm Drake's like, wait, wait, hold on, I'm, I'm sorry, just decisions I'm making now for the cases I'm on, it's more difficult, it's like the the consequences are being more, are being more effective on me than before, and it's something that I'm still not, you know, used to, per se, and obviously, and Thankfully, they just have this communication thread, and they're, they're slowly understanding each other. They even decide to break the ice and just joke around a little bit that, um, that um, you know, when they first met, Drake was just a plain old um, beat cop, and, you know, he was responding to a noise complaint, and he saw her for the first time, and she gave him a choice of, like, either you're going to arrest us or you're going to dance with me, and he decided to dance with her uh, up until the moment the other cop showed up to, like, respond to that noise complaint. He had to, like, literally, like, jump out of a roof, and that's how... That's how they slowly started becoming becoming in love with each other, uh, which is sweet. And she decides to take watch for him while he decides to catch them, get some sleep right now. So uh, he does so. Uh, he event he also eventually uh, wakes up and he and you know again another bonding moment between them. But like you know by the time they both like, kind of you know just are relaxing, they're kind of like getting back onto good good terms. They notice the vehicle. Uh, they go after them. Uh, it, it rolls into a pretty uh, rich fancy neighborhood. Um, and they're trying to figure out, well, we are clearly not wanted in this area, so how do we get into the household without, like, you know, alerting suspicion? Uh, obviously, Drake himself can't do it, because, like, not only are you a man going into an, uh, to a woman's house, presumably, but also, um, you're sadly African-American. At that time, they don't want you. That's sadly the case. His wife, um, decides, like, well, let me go. Like, I think it's just because I'm a woman, I might be able to get a little bit more leeway out of this, and maybe we'll be getting a much more positive response out of her. Drake, of course, is not uh, okay with this, because, like, if this if this woman literally um, organized a hit uh, a hit for out of someone, who else is she capable of? Uh, but they really don't have an option right now. This is their only lead, so she goes in acting like a, um, like a, a preacher or something along that nature, um, she pleads with her to come in, she agrees, um, so she goes inside, and then once she gets inside, she finds the woman, um, um, shooting up drugs, I don't know if it's, if it's heroin or, like, whatever version they have back then, um, she's being shot up, and, you know, she immediately confuses her for someone else, and she's like, oh, let me get you something to drink, let me get you something to eat, but, like, as soon as she stands up, because I, 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 okay, first of all, I never taken drugs, I don't know if this is true, I've always seen Breaking Bad like the rest of the world, but I have a feeling if you suddenly move in an incorrect position while you're in the process of getting this, you know, um, this trip, you will die. And that's what she does. She, uh, it's not, I don't think it's an overdose or she choked on her own vomit. I forgot which one it was, but, uh, she has an attack and obviously, um, Mrs. Drake has, has really no choice but to do nothing because like if she even tries to help her, she's going to get involved and that's going to create an even more bigger mess. Like, why were you here? Why were you searching up this person? So she kind of has to, you know, just hide when her husband immediately comes back into play. Uh, who's immediately sh- um, shocked by this, immediately calling the ambulance. Um, thankfully, it gives Mrs. Drake enough time to escape via the back way, take some of the letters that she had um, in her possession, and just run away from the scene. Uh, she regroups up with um, with Paul, with Drake, uh, who was about to get uh, who was about to get busted by another um, um, neighbor who was not kind to him whatsoever. So they get away, and you know, obviously, she's a bit shocked at what she witnessed. But you know, that's just the cost of you know trying to be in this game right now. Um, so the main question is, again, going back to McCullen is like, who did this? Who was, who was really responsible for the death of, you know, of, of the, of the, of the youngest McCullen? 
it was the rich lady. Like, well, presumably it's the rich lady that we've been seeing throughout the entire um, season. It, it was supposedly her. Uh, what her full purpose was, we don't know what the real intention was. We don't know how it did occur. We don't know right now. Uh, the only thing that she is now baffled by or a little bit concerned by that Della went to go digging into other aspects that she probably does not want her to be. And like now she says, like, okay, now to get we need to get more people involved. Um, so definitely there is something um, something in the works here right now. Uh, but how will this all wrap up? How will this you know entire charade wrap up by next week? I really don't know. But we will have to wait till next week. Because that was it for this week's episode of Perry Mason. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned. I'm a little bit concerned. You know, honestly, you know, the penultimate episode, you kind of get this. Like, I I understand what they're trying to go for. Like, how are they setting up the finale? But, like, there's just so much to deal with in this finale that I'm like, not only do you have to wrap up this story, you have to wrap up the entire murder mystery, you have to wrap up the storylines that you've already set up in this season. And I'm not even including a season three setup. Like they don't do that here. Like this is this is. I'm pretty sure this is like season two could be the last one. We may never get another Perry Mason after this. We need to keep this self-contained, which honestly is true. I, I agree with that. You know, uh, they can't really um, depend on another season to continue the story because you know we may not get we might not get another season. Um, but to be fair, like you know, this season so far has been good i i don't think it's as great as season one though i don't i don't think so i think there there were definitely some great moments and I, i'm i don't know why i'm just switching over to a season two review this is not the case um but this episode like it was dexter Meta. i feel like this would have been the sixth episode this is giving me six episode live not penultimate episode vibe they're like there's still so many questions that i feel like by next week they might rush to answer unless next week's going to be an extended episode which i don't know if that's going to be the case i really don't know um but i just it's getting more and more difficult to like, you know, really understand how are they going to, you know, put the season to a close properly. Um, I don't know really 100%, would you? Uh, but just judging by the overall episode, so I thought it was still good. You know, definitely Perry and Strickland's relationship got tested in this episode. Drake and his wife had to be tested in this episode. After a couple like banger Della episodes, or at least Della related plots, she was kind of like, you know, slowly advancing the plot in general a little bit. That was kind of her role this this episode, um, per se. And um, definitely, you know, I it would have like, again, I, I still don't know how they're going to do it. Like, I really don't know how they're going to do it next week. I really don't know. I want to hope that they're going to like end the ship strong. Uh, but after this episode, I, I don't know. I really don't know. But I hope for the best. I really do. Um, because Perry Mason always finds a way to, like, solve the case. If that was a bad, that was a really bad point. I'm sorry. Uh, but with that being said, I'm gonna give this episode one and a half thumbs up. I still really enjoyed it. It's just, I, it, it makes me questionable for next week's episode. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, uh, but let me in the comments below what you think of this week's episode of Perry Mason. Let's have a conversation down below, as always. Uh, but I believe that's gonna do it for me today, everyone. So if you're unaware, this has been What's the Two from Action X, reviewing every episode in the second season of Perry Mason. If you want to know what we're doing normally, what's the two besides our Perry Mason episode reviews. Uh, currently this week, um, we started, we're doing rookie episode reviews and rookie Fez episode reviews each and every week after brand new episodes on the, on the respective platforms, but it's been a while. Sorry about that. But if you don't care about Perry Mason, you're in luck. We'll be back next week for the season finale review. It is the final episode of the season. A lot on the line here. How will they wrap up the ship? We will find out next week. Uh, but that will not be the end of Perry Mason content after next week's um, finale review. Um, the week after that, we're going to be doing a season three prediction video. What I would like to see from Perry Mason next. Should we get a third season? Um, and then the week after that, you'll be getting a season two review, non-spoiler edition, when the entire season does um, complete on HBO Max. If you want to go watch it and, if, and answer the question, is it worth the binge? So you will get that question um, by that point. But again, this has been What's the Z from Action Egg. Please subscribe to us if you haven't yet. Ring the bell for the notification. Like, favor, share, and as well as follow the social media. But until we see each other again, for all you Masoners out there, I'll see y'all next week for the finale of Perry Mason Season 2. Again, it's weird to say that we've I've waited so long for Perry Mason Season 2 in general that like by next week it will be done. It's crazy for me. But until then, um, thank you so much again. Um, stay safe out there. Be good to each other. And as always, peace out.